my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner, I want to touch upon a video that I did, would have been a couple of years ago, um, and a lot has moved on since the Chassis Sim community since I've uh, since I recorded that tutorial, and I think now's a really good time to readdress that. So what we're going to be talking about is shaker rig simulation. In particular, we'll be talking about the Chassis Sim 7 post shaker rig toolbox and the reason that I want to talk to you about this today is that recently this is a toolbox that I've written an awful lot about in race car engineering but more importantly though this is a toolbox that has gotten significant traction out there in the chassis sim community and I think in some respects I take a real point of pride in this and the fact that the people who've really been using this and has really pioneered the techniques on this have actually actually hasn't been me it's been um, key users like uh, my Australian dealer Pat Cahill from Competition Systems and various other customers who've really shown the way about how to make the, uh, how to make really good use of this and in particular how to use it in anger to get race wins. So let's get started. The first thing about the Shaker Rig Simulation Toolbox is what it does. Rather than doing simulations in the time domain, as we all know and love with lap time simulation and our track replay simulation options, what it does is it gives you the frequent it gives you the frequency response of the vehicle, and this is a really really useful tool in trying to get on. Uh, in uh, uh, it's a really useful tool for a number of reasons. A, if we take a look at what we've got here, what we've got is a heave input and and what we've got here is the heave output and the pitch output. So what we've got here is the first plot will tell you what the resonant frequency is for the heave mode. And what we mean by resonant frequency is that frequency, once you actually start to put it, uh, uh, once you actually subject the car to that frequency, it, the resonant frequency is when the car is the, is the peak response. If you've ever seen the uh, like a very graphic example of that is the Takano. Uh, I think it's called the Takamo Narrow Bridge. Uh, bridge. It was subject to a resonant frequency just after the Second World War, and it vibrated itself to death. So, I mean, that's a pretty extreme example of a resonant frequency, but you get the idea. And the thing that this, as we're about to discuss. The thing that this really brings to light is that it's a very, very effective tool for quickly tuning your dampers and bump rubber combination, in particular of really um, dialing in that compromise between mechanical grip and car response. So just to walk over the outputs very, very quickly, um, that's contact patch load variation. That's your, um, this is output over input and that's for uh, and that's frequency and that in this particular case is for heave and um, uh, pitch response but we'll talk more about that in just a moment where shaker rig simulation comes from where it comes from is what we're doing is we're putting in a frequency based um, input into it so for example we're subjecting in this blue trace to a sinusoidal input and the response is this green line which is our output response now a couple of things to note Typically, the output response, particularly below resonant, uh, 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 b uh, particularly below resonant frequency, and in the area ar around the resonant frequency, the response will be greater than the input. But you'll also notice here that there's a lag there, and that's actually really important to note. It's that combination that really gives you a really good feel for what's actually uh, for what's actually going on. So that's pretty much what's happening underneath the hood. Now. What the Shaker Rig Toolbox returns is it returns output over input as we've discussed. It also, you can also rig this up to look at your phase delay. So you can look at, uh, in particular, it'll quantify how far this gap is. And that's actually a really, really useful for, a really, really useful for, uh, per, uh, that's a really useful parameter. In particular, of just determining how tight the response of the car is going to be. So that's a really, really important thing. And the last thing it returns is contact patch load variation, which is a really good measure of mechanical grip. And what this is measuring, the change in load on the change in acceleration input. And that's pretty much averaged over the whole run. So effectively, you can think of the contact patch load variation as that change in load as a function of kilograms. So that's pretty much how it's returned. 
In terms of setting it up in Chassis Sim, what you'll do, and we're going to walk through a practical demo of how to do this in just a moment, but you'll be presented with um, the seven post rig analysis options. And so what we've got here is the maximum frequency of the test, and, that's set, and that can be um, specified to any frequency the user wants. Typically for analysis mode, I'd like to keep this around about 16 hertz. As we're going to see really shortly, Anything beyond 16 hertz in most cases is actually a waste of time because the actual frequency response has really died down. Now, here are the big things you're going to be playing with. You choose the speed of the car and the maximum peak input velocity of the shaker rig. Now, here's the deal. The speed of the car you set at a particular corner that you're, lo that you're interested in doing. For example, if you are looking at a medium speed corner, you'd probably put in about 150 kilometers per hour. However, if you're analyzing um, things um, such as, if you're analyzing things such as the behavior for some really high speed corners, then you would put in to 2250. It'll be given by the minimum speed in your um, data. Now, the other thing, too, is the maximum peak input velocity of the shaker rig. Typically, the way you would determine that is you look at your damper velocities, and as a rough rule of thumb, I would divide those by about two, three, uh, by about, you know, anywhere between two, two to four. I mean, some rough rules of thumb, 50 mil gives you a pretty smooth circuit, 100 is ballpark really rough, so 150 mil, mil or above. Then you can set up this log, um, you put in a comment, you put an export file name, and if you want, you can also um, do. Uh, you can also put out here for high res mode, and if also too you want to validate this against your shaker rig um, data, you can click here to um, run a rig replay. And what that will do is that will basically give you a whole um, a, a rig replay a, a rig replay option. In terms of how to use it. This is actually a very, very simple. Uh, uh, this is actually um, this is actually a very, very sim this is actually a very, very simple and effective technique that, um, as I said before, uh, was pioneered by the Sim Australian dealer Pat Cahill. And pretty much, this technique was pretty much he outlined this to me on a phone conversation on Bathurst 2011. He said, "Does this sound right?" And I said, "Mate, is it getting results?" And he said, "Yep." And I said, "Mate." Keep using it, and pretty much that's been the backbone of what's also been used in the chassis sim community as well to great effect. So first things first, you look at the peak frequencies because that's going to tell you what to look for in the data. I can't um, state that enough. Secondly, when tuning, what you do is that you'll throw a bunch of springs and dampers at the thing, and you'll focus on tuning for minimum CPLs. Now, what you'll typically do is I like to make up a log in Excel where I'll have run one, front CPL, rear CPL, what um, my peak frequencies are, and I'll just write a comment. And what I'll do is I'll throw a whole bunch of changes at it, and what you'll find is as you throw more changes at it, the CPLs effectively will get to a point where they'll, where they'll start to drop, but then they'll just level off. Once you've got that, then you'll start working on fine adjustments um, with, um, the, dam uh, uh, with uh, the damping to make sure that you get the desired shape response. So that's how you get the driver feel back into it. Now, one thing I do want to say, though, above all, do not go silly. If anything, I might actually even upgrade that to, above all, don't go stupid. Just remember, a lot of the springing that you do in a car isn't just determined by the ultra ride height characteristics or the um, or, or what you want on the shaker rig. Just remember, a lot of the springings that we put into into um, cars are dictated by what the tire wants. So. But, so this is one of these options that, for all intents and purposes, uh, this is one of these things that you use as a fine tuning uh, that you use as a fine tuning tool, and you always back reference to what's going on with data. Which also leads me to a very important point with using the choker rig simulation. If you, are, if you are new to this, what I would do is I would apply the shaker rig simulation first to understand the setups that worked. Once you know the characteristics of the setups that worked that gave really good driver feel and uh, and, re and uh, really good grip, then you can go off and look at other setups, look at what the differences are, and that will give you your first clue in terms of what you should uh, be shooting for. So, without further ado, let's give you a practical example of how to drive this. So, what I'm going to do 
is currently I've got a Formula Free car model um, loaded, and so to run a shaker rig simulation, I'll just go to this. Uh, I'll just go to the start button, and I'll click on the activate seven post rig um, checkbox. Then I'll click on start simulation. Now you'll see here that I've got um, analysis. Uh, that I've got analysis mode. You've also got a bump profile mode there. I if you go to bump profile mode, all of this is redundant. Uh, look, to be quite honest, you would pretty much just use the bump profile mode. Look, that's a that's if for those of you who have used the bump profiling toolbox, you'll see a whole bunch of files echoed out. That is just gives you it's basically a fixed amplitude response against various speeds. But where the uh, so that's basically what Chassis uses for um, uh, the bump profiling. However. Where you really will see this thing shine if you use an analysis mode. Again, you choose the speed of the car and the maximum velocity of the car. So I'll just leave that as 150 kph and 100 mil. I'm just going to call this my baseline. And I'm going to export my file name and I'll go to some post rig. And here is my baseline. I'm going to click on OK to run the simulation, and now what's going to happen is it's going to go through and do a um, a, 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 um, a fixed velocity shaker rig run for heave, pitch, and roll. And so it's just going to go through, do its bits and pieces, and when it's done, you'll see now file output done. So what I'll do. Let's click on cancel there, and now what I'm going to go do is to look at that. I go to simulate seven post rig analysis results. I'll click on load data set, and I'll click on my baseline, and I'll click on heave, and there you go. So this is pretty much what uh, this is just looking at the outputs of what we're doing here. Again, we've got our front contact patch load variation there our rear contact patch load variation there. And also, too, for um, those of you who are coming from an asymmetric background, whether you be a NASCAR or IndyCar, or any other of those associated junior formulas, if you click on View Individual CPLs, that will also give you the individual CPLs as well. So this does work in full asymmetric mode because it has been used on uh, ovals. As well. It has been used for oval analysis as well. So I'll just um, go back to symmetric mode. And to, to analyze this, all you've got to do is click on the control and you'll see the heave response the, and uh, the frequency as well. Now, you'll see here there are various other options that you can look at, such as pitch, Roll. Roll's a bit pointless in this case because obviously there was no roll input frequency. You look at the front damper, the front and the front uh, and um, the front tire as well. So you've got all that information that you can look at. You can also print this off um, to hard copy if you want. Now, also too, you'll see here that I've got my input mode. So let's just, for the sake of the argument, I'll go to pitch, and you can see pretty much what it did in pitch. But more importantly, let me now go into the phase angle. And there you can actually see what your phase angle is. So again, this gives you some indication of what um, the uh, this will give you some indication of how uh, of how tight the car is. Basically, pretty much before resonance, the small the the smaller the phase angle, the more responsive the car uh, the uh, the more responsive the car is going to be. So that's also a really good thing to keep in mind. So let me just get back to um, the amplitude mode. So this is actually a really good thing now. Some things that are really worth chasing down, there have been a couple of excellent PDF papers that have been put out there um, about um, how to use this. In particular, I've got to give acknowledgement to a paper that came out of the Automotive Research Centre in Indianapolis in the early 2000s about looking at analysis of a champ car um, by, uh, by, um, uh, by a group of people, and that was an excellent, uh, that was an excellent paper. It was actually um, one of the co-authors is the current director of the ARC, and Henry, uh, Henry, and Henry, please forgive me if I'm about to screw up your name. Um, uh, Coles, which uh, um, uh, uh, Coles a chack. He's. It, it's an excellent paper. It's well worth reading. So, okay. So this is pretty much how we. Um, uh, this is basically the mechanics of um, going uh, of using the Shaker Rig toolbox. Now, so what do we want to do if we want to make a change? It's really easy. I'm just going to click on the rear spring, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a 1,000 pound rear spring. I'm going to click on OK. And now what I'm going to do, click on Start, go to Activate Shaker Rig, click on Start Simulation. Now what I'll just do is I'll write 1,000 uh, 1, pound force uh, of pounds per inch rear spring. 
And what I'm going to do is select the file. I mean, I've already done it before. I'm going to show you the mechanics of how you do changes. We'll click on OK. We'll let that um, do its thing. And now that we've done, just to analyze those results, we go to Simulate, 7 post rig Analysis Results, go to Load Data Set. I'll load my baseline first, then I'll load my change. And now to compare the two, there you go. So the original, as you can see, was black. The data set, uh, the 1,000 pound rear spring, while uh, the 1,000 pound rear spring is the red response. So as you can see, it's a bit of a worse response, particularly in terms of our contact patch load variation at the rear. Now again, a bit of a Mickey Mouse, uh, again, a bit of a Mickey Mouse example of what to do. But you can then go through and apply all the. Uh, you can go through apply all these changes and get a really good feel for what the car is doing. So, action steps from here, what I'd really encourage you to do, for those of you who are already in the Chassis Sim community, go off, give this a run. For those of you who aren't in the Chassis Sim community, right, what you're just seeing in the, what the Shaker Rig Toolbox is currently limited to um, a chassis sim, uh, to um, the Chassis Sim Elite packages, or as a separate toolbox, it's actually not in um, in uh, professional online however and here's the big but there are some changes coming down the way so stick to the uh, so stick to this uh, space so we're going to be announcing some things on the online simulation shortly so just hold your horses on that for the time being but for those of you who are um, in the chassis sim community throw some on the wall and for the, those of you who are online users or looking at getting online watch this space there could be some exciting there are going to be some exciting developments coming down the road so this concludes this particular episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. But look, throw some mud on the wall, have some fun with this, but more importantly, I think you're going to see what a really strong and valuable tool this is, and I look forward to catching you on the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.